Hello, my name is Tim. This video is a replacement for me and my colleagues' Kai 2020 presentation, which was supposed to be given in person in Hawaii. As I'm sure you know, Kai 2020 was cancelled due to the COVID-19 crisis. This talk is about our paper, Creatable Content and Tangible Interaction in Aphasia, and reports research undertaken by HCI researchers and speech and language researchers at City University of London. In this work, we have co-designed a tangible platform and media sequencing app called Creatable with people with aphasia. Aphasia is an acquired language impairment which sometimes follows a stroke. Creative acts are often evocative. They might allow us to convey thoughts, emotions or rich imagery. They enable us to express ideas we might not otherwise be able to express through traditional communication routes, such as speaking and writing. Further to the expressive benefits of creativity, being creative has also been shown to afford improved mental well-being and self-esteem. Sharing digital media online is now commonplace. Much of this content is multimedia, allowing for multiple modalities including non-language modalities, and the creation of multiple types of media offers an opportunity for people with language impairments to be expressive in new ways. However, effectively engaging with digital technologies to create such content can be challenging. The tools we use to create such content generally require complex, language-laden interactions. This poses a significant barrier to access for users with aphasia. Tangible interactions, i.e. physically interacting with digital data, are a potential means to address this challenge. In this presentation, I will describe Creatable, a tangible platform and media sequencing app designed with people with aphasia. I will provide some background, describe the tool itself, the co-design process, and the use of Creatable in a digital content creation workshop. First, some background. This work sits at the intersection of tangibles for content creation and content creation for people with aphasia. Previous work has investigated how tangibles might be used to support creative endeavours. A common example of a tangible input device for drawing is the stylus. However, a number of prototypes have been built which offer a range of controls which offer more diverse manipulation. Reactable is probably one of the more notable examples. Reactable affords collaborative composition of music on a table using puck-like tangible objects. Reactable is just one example of a tangible system. See the paper for more details and a comparison to our work. Aphasia is an acquired language impairment. It is most commonly caused by a stroke, but can be caused by other forms of damage to language regions of the brain. It can affect reading, writing, speech and comprehension. The aspects of language affected can vary significantly between people. Some people might be only able to produce a few words, but retain good levels of auditory comprehension. Against this context, we present a tangible platform, Creatable, and a media sequencer app that we've developed to support people with severe aphasia in creating expressive multimedia digital content. Creatable is a tangible platform for creating and curating multimedia content. It consists of a table where tangible objects are arranged by users. A webcam and fiducial-based recognition system detect the position of objects to create an equivalent digital representation. Creatable can be used in a number of ways. In this paper we describe the usage of Creatable as a media sequencer. Creatable is 780mm in width. 490 millimeters in depth, 715 in height. Top surface is 10 millimeter perspex mounted within an aluminium extrusion frame. A webcam below tracks fiducial markers on the top surface using the Reactivision framework. Tracing paper is used so that users cannot see down, but the camera can see the markers on top. Users place content represented by tangible tokens on the creatable. These can be pictures, words, recorded music, or even individual notes. Content is represented via an Arrange display. The Arrange display presents tangible tokens on the screen in digital form. This display updates as users move content about the surface of Creatable. The content is then played with a knob on the front of the device. The user controls the playhead speed by twisting it from left to right. The playhead speed can be positive, that is going forwards, or negative, going backwards. Its speed can also be reduced to zero, that is stopped. 
The playhead is represented on a range display, and also via a programmable LED strip embedded into the frame of the device. One of the core design aspects of Creatable is its looping feature. When the playhead reaches either end of the Creatable, it loops back to the other side, allowing repeated playing. The visual content is then displayed on the play screen, audio through a speaker. Creatable was co-designed with four people with severe to moderate aphasia over the course of three, two and a half hour sessions. In workshop one, we explored the notion of tangibility. People with aphasia often have difficulties using their right hand or arm. We wanted to understand what opportunities and challenges different sizes and shapes of tangible controls best supported people with aphasia. We explored tangibility through hands-on exploration with early prototypes of music manipulation and image manipulation via blob detection using an overhead webcam. Tangibles were received positively, and looping was found to be a useful approach as it allowed people to iteratively refine their idea. In workshop two, we focused on a range of different media types. Specifically, we focused on the types of content that people would like to create. From this, a mixture of complementary media emerged as an interesting theme. We also discussed the potential for cutting down the amount of content. The one-to-one -one mapping between digital and physical content meant the co-designers were often overwhelmed by the amount of content on display. In workshop three, the final workshop, we built upon these ideas and thought about how we might convey different sentiments and moods. We refined the prototype and protocol again. For example, we now have the initial version of the prototype within an aluminium frame with the camera looking up from below to the surface. We explored the idea of rotatable pentagonal tokens which allow the user to access a group of content as they are rotated. We refined the design based on feedback from a final co-design workshop. We then ran a digital content creation workshop. We wanted to understand the usability and the possibilities of Creatable for enabling people with aphasia to create digital content. Eleven people with aphasia participated in the workshop using Creatable to convey specific ideas and sentiments. Participants were split into three groups. Each chose a random theme by choosing pairs of words on a piece of paper. For example, happy and earth. Content came from a range of sources, some of which were created by the co-designers themselves. Three groups made a range of different types of content. Group three, who I'll focus on for brevity, chose the words calm and wind. They chose one of the co-designers' paintings, choosing the words wild and angry to match it. They then selected a picture of a solitary fisher, adding the word quiet. They then matched the word strong to a pair of skiers climbing a mountain. Then finally used a picture of the sea to match the word love. They explored a range of music by playing different tokens, finally deciding on a mellow, soft piece of acoustic guitar music. Here's the final composition. We took a range of subjective, such as lick data and spoken feedback, and objective data such as analysis of interactions and the content created. I'll focus more on the subjective data for the purposes of this presentation. The post-study Likert results generally indicated a positive response towards Creatable. Most participants felt they made something new, that they couldn't have made without Creatable. Although many participants expressed that they enjoyed using Creatable in a group, and that they'd like to use it again, many also wanted to try using the tool alone. Some participants noted that this was due to tensions in the group nature of the creative process. Participant 11 said, challenging to create something with others when their choices don't reflect or gel with mine. On the other hand, we received some positive responses from people who'd made content in a group. Participant 9 said, it's nice to have people around you with different opinions. Participant 10 said, yeah, didn't mind. You choose yours, I choose mine, okay. Some participants noted positive sentiment towards sequencing the content. Participant 10 expressed strong determination. Keep going. In general, the participants liked the one-to-one -one mapping of the prototype. 
Participant 9 noted, you just choose what you want and put it on the table. Simple. Create will spark discussion in all groups. Notably, people use it to tell stories about themselves or match the content they were creating to other media or other world events. One example of this was participant 11. She noticed the word shock. In dark humour, she responded, shock? Having strokes is shocking, isn't it? She then rotated through the different words. Anger? Having a stroke made me angry as well. Rotating to cold, she then went on to describe an experience of a movie she saw, set in Russia, which made her feel cold. The data from the creative workshop suggested that participants with a range of aphasic difficulties were able to engage with Creatable, that the tangibility of the prototype afforded them the ability to create expressive digital content. While we saw some tensions in group use, the participants felt that the content that they made was theirs. This suggests that the group dynamic did not affect ownership and that users did not feel that the tool was automating some of the creative process, a common issue in creativity support tools. We saw Creatable being used for far more than creating expressive content. We saw it being used to support challenging and humorous discussions about lived experience. This indicates some potential in using tangible content creation activities in stroke groups. To conclude, with increasing numbers of people acquiring stroke-related language impairments and the ever-growing power of digital content, it is essential that content creation tools are made more accessible. Here we have presented a tangible content creation prototype called Creatable. Creatable has allowed us to think about how content creation processes and tangible interactions might be better adapted to support accessible creation of digital content. Our work shows the benefit of such approaches in supporting people with aphasia in creating digital content and the merits of engaging with people with aphasia in the design and testing of content creation tools.